Scandinavia refers to the three northern European countries of Denmark, Norway, and Sweden. Norway and Sweden cover most of the Scandinavian peninsula. Together with Finland, these are the Nordic countries. Iceland is also typically included as both a Nordic and Scandinavian country. Greenland and the Faroe Islands are both autonomous countries within the Kingdom of Denmark. The Baltic countries of Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia also share many cultural and historical similarities with the Nordic countries. In the present day, the vast majority of the region's population lives near the coast. This was even more so throughout most of history. Dense forestation and little arable land led to small, close-knit communities forming by the sea. During the region's prehistory, the early cultures that arose there were compelled to become adept boat builders and expert fishermen. The introduction of crops and farm animals, which were first domesticated in the Near East, promoted a slow but steady increase in population. Competition for limited resources and the harsh northern climate meant that in scarce times, the constant raiding of one's neighbors became a way of life, fostering a warlike culture. It is commonly believed that during the 3rd millennium BC, Indo-European languages replaced the older Neolithic languages of southern Scandinavia, either through invasion, peaceful migration, or slower cultural diffusion. In the Nordic Bronze Age that followed, the region prospered, as it became connected through intermediaries to the larger international trade network of Mediterranean and Near Eastern empires. Scandinavian amber has been commonly found in Bronze Age graves in Greece, while Mycenaean beads and gold from the south has been found in Nordic graves of the period. The Nordic Bronze Age culture had no written language. However, it is evident from the material record that their society survived for many centuries after the region-wide collapse of the Near Eastern Bronze Age empires in the 12th century BC, albeit in a much diminished fashion. Throughout their late Bronze and early Iron Age, the Nordic peoples had little contact with the outside world, and there is little surviving material culture from this time. It is believed limited contact with these peoples, or word of mouth, led to the Greek legends of Hyperborea, a land of giants in the north where the sun never set. In the Cimbrian War of the late 2nd century BC, several tribes from Jutland migrated south, defeating all of the Celtic tribes they came into contact with. These new people, who the Romans called Germani, or Germans, had migrated south because their homeland had suffered severe flooding. The Germanic tribes decisively defeated the Romans in their first three major battles with each other. Rome suffered the heaviest losses it had since the Punic Wars with Carthage. The Romans were able to regroup, and decisively defeat the Germans. As the Romans defeated, slaughtered, or enslaved the Celtic tribes in what is now France, Germanic tribes from what is now Denmark defeated the Celts and consolidated their control over the territory north of the Roman Empire. For many centuries, the Romans held these tribes at bay with a extensive network of fortifications and garrisoned troops. During the fall of the Western Roman Empire, the Ostrogoths, Visigoths, Vandals, and the Franks greatly contributed to the fall of the continental portion of the empire. While the island of Britain was conquered by the Angles, Saxons, and the Jutes from what is now Denmark and northern Germany, over a relatively short period of time, these Germanic tribes converted to Christianity and formed kingdoms, many swearing allegiance to the Pope in Rome. By the end of the 8th century, Northern Europe experienced the greatest period of peace and stability since before the fall of the Western Roman Empire. This came to an end with the dawn of the Viking Age. In 793, the monastery of Lindisfarne was plundered, and the monks who survived were enslaved. If you don't want to be like the defenseless monks of Lindisfarne while sailing through the internet, I would recommend this video sponsor, NordVPN. While it was tough to defend yourself from an unexpected Viking raid, Today, it is much easier to protect yourself on the internet with a virtual private network, or VPN. A VPN can keep your data safe from hackers and spyware. The Viking longship was one of the most impressive pieces of technology of its day. Its impressive design and shallow draft meant that it was capable of both sailing on the open seas and in constricting rivers better than any other ship of its day. NordVPN is also a piece of technology that allows you to travel to different corners of the internet. Many streaming services, online shopping, education, and entertainment sites only work in particular countries. You can sail around those restrictions with NordVPN, which allows you to quickly and easily change your IP address to countries all over the world. 
giving you access to the content you want. If you want online privacy, website access, and security, NordVPN is the way to go, which is perfect to use when you are traveling or using unsecure networks like at a coffee shop, which is what I do, because you can't be too careful. And NordVPN is offering you 70% off a three-year plan and a free bonus month if you go to nordvpn.com forward slash Epimetheus and use promo code Epimetheus. Plus, Nord will be giving surprise gifts to their customers as they are celebrating their 8th birthday this month. The marauders who appear on the pages of history at the end of the 8th century did not refer to themselves as Vikings, nor did their contemporaries. To go Viking meant to go raiding. The three main groups of these raiders were the Danes, Norsemen or Norwegians, and Swedes. All of these terms were sometimes used in a generic sense by outsiders to refer to all northern invaders. In the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms of Britain, they were often collectively called the Danes, because most of the Northmen to raid there were Danes. Denmark was the first Nordic country to form a large unified kingdom at some point earlier in the 8th century, while in Norway there were around 30 small kingdoms. The unified Danish kingdom must have aided them in the organization of larger campaigns. In the spring of 845, a fleet of 120 Danish longships sailed down the Seine River to Paris. They besieged and then captured the city, which was ravaged and looted. They were convinced to leave, after being paid a bribe of over 5,000 pounds of gold and silver. During the Viking Age, such bribes to avoid plunder were called the Dane Geld, the Dane's Gold, and became quite common throughout Britain and the Frankish Carolingian Empire. Two decades later, the so-called Great Heathen Army, a large coalition of Northmen, conquered much of the island of Britain and established Dane law there. In 872, Harold Fairhair established the Kingdom of Norway, uniting many of the smaller petty kingdoms. In the east, the Northmen, predominantly the Swedes, sailed down the rivers of Eastern Europe, raiding and extracting tribute for decades. There, they were known as the Varangians, or the Rus. The Varangian Rurik established rule over a loose confederation of Slavic and Finnic peoples, called the Kevin Rus. Rurik's dynasty ruled in some part of Russia for 21 generations, over a period of 700 years, until the death of Tsar Vasily IV in 1612. From the 9th through 11th centuries, many Swedes settled on the coast of what is now Finland. The Danes focused on controlling England while the most north of the Northmen colonized the north of Scotland, parts of Ireland, and later, Iceland and Greenland. In the early 10th century, Rollo, a Norseman of either Danish or Norwegian origin, was viking about in the northwest pointy part of France. The Frankish king was unable to effectively militarily deal with him, so he found another solution. He gave Rollo Normandy, which was named after the Norsemen. Rollo converted to Christianity, and served under the French king as Duke of Normandy, and was charged with protecting France against other Northmen. Rollo's Francicized, French-speaking descendants were the Normans. During the early 10th century, the last Anglo-Saxon kingdom, Wessex, drove out the Danes and became the unified country of England for the first time. A few decades later, in 970, the Swedes united under their first king, Eric the Victorious. That same year, Harold Bluetooth, king of the Danes, who had previously converted to Christianity along with much of the country, conquered Norway. Bluetooth lost and regained Norway. His son, Sven Forkbeard, also lost and regained Norway, and then conquered England. His realm has been called the North Sea Empire. After his death, the Triple Crown was split up. A few years later, his son Canute managed to unite all three crowns again. After a decade of constant war, in both England and Scandinavia. After Canute's death, all three kingdoms split again. Magnus the Good of Norway peacefully claimed the crown of Denmark as the result of a very good deal he had made. His brother, Harald Hardrada, succeeded him as king of Norway. Harald had previously worked as a mercenary for the Grand Prince of the Kievan Rus, and then worked many years for the Eastern Roman Empire. He became commander of the Varangian Guard, and campaigned throughout the Mediterranean. In 1066, both Harold and then William, Duke of Normandy, invaded England. The English defeated the Norse in the north, and then lost to the Normans in the south. Most historians consider Harold's invasion of England 
to be the end of the Viking Age. During the following 12th and 13th centuries, conflict internalized around Scandinavia and the Baltic. After the last Swedish pagans were either dead or converted to become good Catholics, the Swedes embarked on crusades to convert or conquer the Finns on their opposite shore. Sweden and Denmark then fought a very long series of wars to control Norway. To overly summarize them, Denmark generally had the upper hand in the early wars. The three kingdoms joined together to form the Kalmar Union, with one monarch for more than a century. The Kalmar Union was not really united, and fought wars with itself. In 1523, Sweden officially split up with the Kingdom of Denmark-Norway, ending the Kalmar Union. Sweden generally had the upper hand in the later wars of the 16th and 17th centuries. Under the brilliant military tactician, Gustavus Adolphus, Sweden invaded the Holy Roman Empire during the Thirty Years' War. The Swedish army had great success in aiding the German Protestants. Gustavus Adolphus died in a major battle where his army was victorious. The Swedish were later defeated by the Spanish who were supporting the German Catholics. The remaining Swedes withdrew to northern Germany for the remainder of the war. Sweden then resumed fighting more wars with Denmark, and also entered into a series of wars with Poland and Russia. In the Great Northern War, pretty much all of Sweden's neighbors went to war against it. The Swedish king, Charles XII, initially had a great deal of success, until he marched on Moscow. Things went downhill from there and the Swedes eventually lost the long war. Russia established itself as a major power, while Sweden went into decline. During the Napoleonic Wars, Russia annexed Finland from Sweden. In the aftermath, Sweden received Norway in a trade with Denmark. Sweden still had to fight a war with Norway to compel them into unifying. Throughout the 19th century, a large portion of Norway's population left the country. They predominantly resettled in the United States, particularly Minnesota and Wisconsin. In 1905, Norway became independent. Finland was able to gain its independence in 1917 as a result of the Russian Revolution. During the Great War, the Nordic countries were able to maintain neutrality. However, during the not-so-great sequel, Germany occupied Denmark and Norway, while Finland managed to retain its independence throughout the war, despite a massive Soviet invasion and having supported and then battling the losing Germans in the last year of the war. In 1949, Legos were invented in Denmark, and the Nordic countries proceeded to achieve some of the highest standards of living anywhere in the world. With decent furniture at affordable prices, lots of oil, delicious food, and some of the best music out there, the region has a lot going for it today. This has been Abimetheus, and I hope you have enjoyed this video. A big thanks to all my patrons over on Patreon, and this video sponsor, NordVPN.